So uh, today the talk is about uh, interactions between entropy theory and descriptive set theory. So uh, this work began uh, about well, uh, 2019, right before the pandemic. I was at a conference in uh, Krakow in, uh, at a differential equations and dynamical systems conference. It's a huge conference, very many different things. And one of the guys came up me after my talk and he said, oh, you know, I, I hear you know something about descriptive set theory. And I'm like, eh, sure. And then he he works in dynamical systems. He just doesn't know anything about descriptive set theory. But he had some constructions that he'd already done and which was like had a high, high rank attached to it. And so they had to publish something and somebody said, hey, this looks like pi 1 1 rank. And it, and it was. But then we actually worked on more complicated uh, dynamical problems and through uh, something was uh, something is power one uh, uh, not Borel, poetic now not Borel, uh, and then some interesting things came out of it, which will be I think interesting to uh, people in this audience also. So I'll do a very uh, sort of uh, before jumping into the stuff, sort of quick uh, overview of uh, sort of the background of the subject. Uh, so so if you sort of you know in, just too much. Uh, Dynamics or whatever, so, you know, sit still for a minute. And we'll get to the descriptive set theory part. So the talk organized as following: introduction, local entropy, uh, derivatives, expansions, pi one one ranks, and main results. Okay, so what is entropy? Very loosely speaking, entropy is a measure of disorder and chaos in the system. So if you took a some class in chemistry, physics, somewhere in thermodynamics. That's what this was the defined by Clausius from like 1800, probably in eighteen hundred sometimes. In statistical mechanics, you had the later definition again by physicists, and in quantum mechanics, you had von Neumann in the thirties uh, defining this. And then uh, in nineteen forties, Shannon defined what's entropy in sense of information theory, and this was he did some uh, seminal work, which we use today. Like okay, so for example. You got some data and you want to compress it. How, what's the best compression you could do, right? And then he proved results about what, what, what was the best you can do. And this is actually turns out to be related to the entropy. So he was, he was way ahead of his time, right? And then came the mathematical part later uh, after that, but by Russian school of uh, mathematicians, Kolmogorov and Senna, uh, uh, they defined measure theoretic entropy. And then a few years later, uh, Adler. Kenheim and uh, McAndrew defined topological uh, entropy. And this was also something equivalent to defined by Bowen and Denver independently. Okay, so local entropy, so here's the thing. So think about entropy as a, as a real number assigned to a mapping on a continuous, a, a continuous map, a con continuous mapping defined on some compact space. So the, the larger the entropy, the more complicated the system or the more chaotic the system, very roughly speaking. Okay. Entropy zero means there's no chaos in some sense. I'm speaking very uh, roughly, right? So many results in the past were this. Suppose you have positive entropy, then something, something, something happens. Okay, there's some kind of chaotic behavior happens in dynamical systems. But as you'll see in a second, the definition is very complicated. And so, uh, so you're like, okay, Positive entropy, what do I do with it? Okay, there's a lot of work, and then I don't I can't get something. So over the years, uh, uh, they actually have so what we're interested in is positive entropy versus zero. Okay. So we want we want if something is positive entropy means the system is complicated. So over the years, maybe de decade or a couple of decades, there actually been a theory developed. It's called local entropy theory. And as, as you'll see, we get to the definition, it's very combinatorial in nature. And some of the definitions look very much combinatorial, topological type of thing, kind of thing you would be interested in descriptive set theory. Okay. And so this is a very, so this was the, 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 the sort of the, the final paper which captured all this, put it together is by Kerr and Lee uh, in 2000 something, late 2000 something. And uh, it's an extremely useful, useful tool. So, I mean, this is something you might want to keep in mind if you ever come up across this stuff. So, uh, and there's a, Survey by Glasner and E on the subject. Okay, so I uh, I like to exploit things whenever I can, right? So when I first saw this local entropy theory, I'm like, wow, this is really cool, right? So uh, 
something that I was able to do, for example, in continuum theory and dynamical systems, they have like, hey, if something has positive entropy, then the underlying space must be complicated, or the inverse Lenox space, underlying space must be complicated. They only knew the answers from the interval. Okay? They didn't know uh, 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 in general. And then this Kato and I were able to use this local entropy theory to solve the problem completely. And this was open since like 1980. So the whole point was before they didn't know what to do with positive entropy, but this local entropy theory was extremely useful. Another thing with uh, some Brazilian colleagues, we gave like much simple proof of uh, uh, some, something really complicated by uh, uh, Weiss and, and Blasner in induced measures. Okay, so let me jump into it and get to it. So uh, a topological dynamical systems for this talk is just simply compact metric space and a continuous snap into it. Right. A measurable, a measurable dynamical systems is simply you have a measurable, you have a measure space uh, and a let's say probability measure and a, and a continuous, not a continuous, a measurable map which preserves measure. Whatever the measure of images is the same. Okay. Okay. So entropy, so, so you don't have to understand it right away, but just to tell you what the definition is for measure theoretic entropy. So let's say we have a, we have a uh, measurable dynamical system, okay? So this is the Borel algebra. This is the uh, measure, and this is the transformation, okay? So what do we do? Well, take a measurable partition okay, of X. Then what you do is you define this quantity. You take the log of the measure of each partition element times the measure of the partition element. Take this, take the negative because the value will be negative. Take the sum. Okay. Right. So this is the the entropy related to that partition. Probability measure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming all measure probability measure. Yeah. Okay, so this is a quantity, with, it's not really entropy, but I'm calling H mu of P. Stay here. So if you have two partitions, measurable partitions, again, my partitions are finite here. You just look at the, the refinement, it's just a common refinement you usually do. So uh, entropy of P, so again, this is measure theoretic entropy, with respect to a partition P is given by the following. Okay, so you look at P, the partition, you look at the partition given by the inverse of the mapping and so on. You look at the common refinement. Okay. So now you've got a refine, now you've got a partition of the space, and you compute h mu of that partition, and then you take log of that. I, I forgot to put log in here. Uh, no, it's already in there because it's already con contained inside h. Yeah, I'm sorry. So this is that you take the h mu of that particular partition and then divide by n. Okay. And you take the lib int as n goes to uh, that, that lib int over n, n, n positive. So the entropy of T is this particular quantity, and we take soup over all the partitions. All right, so if you've got somebody, if you've got a mapping and a, a, an object, you're like, okay, by the time you do all this, this is, this is too much work. Unless you have a very simple example, which we'll look at in a minute. Okay. Uh, so how do you actually get the exact entropy? So, okay, my, for my talk, we're interested in positive entropy or zero entropy. And that's, that's a big distinction. Okay, so again, the point here is, okay, if you don't get the definition, all oh, that's okay, because that, that's the whole point of the local entropy theory. Okay. Now, topological entropy is something similar. So we have a topological dynamical system. And for any open cover C, we look at the, this to be the, Least cardinality which cover which covers the space. So you might have a lot of repetitions in there. So topological entropy with respect to partition, so this should be actually a cover, open cover. Okay, open cover C is given by this. Again, you do the same kind of thing. You take C, you look at T inverse of C. C is like an open cover now, okay? And then you look at the T inverse, you look at the common refinement. Now you look at the minimal number of element in there, which, which is required to cover the space. Take log of that, divide by n, and take the limit. Yeah, x is compact. Yeah, topological dynamical system, x is always compact. This talk, yeah. 
when I assume measurable dynamical system, that's, you know, the, the, the topological structure. Okay. okay. And so the topological entropy is the soup over all such covers. Okay. So let's look at it. Let's look at a simple example. Okay. This will be instructive for us. So my, my example is X is just our favorite Cantor space. Write it like this. And sigma is just x2, x3, and so on. So this is what they call a full shift, right? On one sided full shift. So again, a continuous mapping, as simple a mapping as you can get, all right? So let's just take a simple open, and again, I, on purpose, I put, pick something very simple. It's zero dimensional, okay? So let's look at an open cover of this type. What do I mean by this? All open sets start with zero, I mean, all elements starting with zero, one, the usual terminology, okay? So now let's look at, uh, okay, let's look at C, what's my notation? I forget the wedge up or wedge down, wedge down, right? C, uh, sigma inverse of C, sigma minus N of C. What is this? Well, look, here, just everything which starts, break it into two pieces, starts with zero or one. What's sigma inverse of C? Well, this is going to be everything which is in the second coordinate, well, the next coordinate is either zero or one, okay? and so on. And when I look at the common refinement, I'll just get all the strings of length actually in plus one, okay? So this will be all the tau, in zero, one through n plus. Okay. Uh, I like to show off my iPad skills. This is n plus one. Okay. So this is clearly what's the cardinality of this set? Uh, the, the minimal amount to cover it. Well, I. I mean, it's just, I picked a very simple covering, so this is just what? Uh, it's two to the n plus one, okay. And I take log of this divided by n, so my entropy, and n goes to infinity. So now it's my entropy with respect to this cover is log two. Okay, so the topological entropy of this particular cover is log two. Now you can prove that this is the, maximum you can get for this particular map. So, so I, picked, I picked a very simple example and I calculated its topological entropy. Again, everything's picked just right, so I, you know, I didn't compute it, but I at least showed it's positive. Okay, so a couple of other definitions from dynamics. A system is transitive means what? You give me two non-empty open sets, U and V, in some future times, I go from U to V. Okay, so that's the transitive part. Uh, weekly mixing means the product is transitive, so well, don't worry about that so much here. Mixing, okay, means much stronger than transitive. It means given any two open sets, not only can I go from U to V by iterative T, but from some point on, I'll always, the, the, the image always intersects. That's mixing, topological mixing. So let me look at it, give you a mixing example. Zero, one, that, okay. So I claim this map is mixing. But look, if I look at its iterates, what do I get? Uh, let's see, this, 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 right? So it's just the same thing. This is like, if this is T, Tn is just the same thing, compressed and, and copy term. So the thing is, if you give me any open set here and here, well, look, eventually, give, give me any two open sets in the domain and the range. Well, eventually, uh, when n is large enough, I have some small piece which will entirely map into the entire line. Because these little pieces here, 
Yeah, let's go a different color. This is one cycle. This, okay, this, these pieces here, they all map onto the entire interval, right? If I take this large enough copy, it'll map it on the entire uh, interval, and so I can cover any, any open set. So this is, in fact, what they call exact. So it's topological mixing, okay, for example. The shift that we have is actually also topological mixing. It's very similar to this, the discrete version of this. Okay. Okay, so here's the relationship between topological uh, uh, entropy and measure theoretic entropy. Okay. So suppose you have a topological dynamical system. So again, keep in mind X is compact, T is continuous. So at first, it's, it's a theorem that you can get actually get a measure which is T on X, which is a T invariant, real measure, real probability measure. Okay, but not only that. Okay, so so the M of T is non-empty. The topological entropy is just the soup of the measure theoretic entropy over all the measures which are invariant. Okay, so there's an intimate collect connection between the topology part and the and the measure theoretic part. Okay, and this is called a variational principle. Okay, so the motivation for the definitions I'm about to give. Okay, so this is going back to all the measure theoretic def uh, definitions. So this was like pretty well studied in I don't know. 60, the Kolmogorov and Sina and so on, right? The, from that type frame. So, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, you have a measure theoretical dynamical system, okay? And the following are equivalent. Remember, keep in mind, we, what, what does it mean? We have to take some partition, okay? We have some partition. I'll use different color. And you have a, you have something complicated happening to that. You look at this, the entropy with respect to the partition is large. Free images are kind of, you know, they, they inter interact in a very complicated way. You take the partition, the free image of partition, and so on. Okay. So the thing is, if you speak the if you take the partition to be the whole space, nothing happens because every time you just get the whole space. So if some partition gives you something large, some partition maybe they don't. Okay. So the idea here is this: suppose for each partition, you have positive entropy with respect to some measures. So basically, this is saying is entropy is witnessed. For all, everywhere, because yeah, you, you could have entropy with something complicated here, not complicated there, but you know, but the whole system is still complicated. Okay, so this is in some sense saying the the, the entropy being complicated is sort of exhib exhibited exhibited by every partition. So that means it's sort of everywhere complicated. Okay, this is the same thing as you can do it with two element partitions, and this is the same thing. This is the property we're interested in. It's what they call complete positive entropy. That means that each non-trivial factor has positive entropy. So that means what? Okay, see, so system is complicated, but if you have some portion where it's not complicated, you can look at like a, a take this thing, continue put it down to a point, and then you have something just like this where it's not complicated. Okay, so basically this is saying is it's so if you get any non-trivial uh, factor, then that that thing is positive entropy. Okay, so factor means uh, the, the mapping can keep the, uh, so you've got a mapping, let's say X here. And so a factor onto any space. So the diagram commutes, so S is a factor of T. No, no, the non-trivial just means you've got more than one point. More than one point. That's why it's more yeah, yeah. So non-trivial measure. I mean, basically non-trivial measure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, all of these definitions are equivalent. Yeah, when I say more than one point, I mean yeah. So, uh, so it's not trivial in the sense that the measures all concentrate in one place. Okay. So what well, what happened was this. This guy Blanchard uh, in France, he was trying to get a topological analog of this system. This, this theorem. So this is like a famous theorem from. Uh, you know, ergodic theory, right? Uh, done by Thomas Gross, you know, and so on. So he's like, what's the right definition? Okay. So he d defined this notion. This is back in the 90s. So he called, okay, so now we're, now we're, we're going to work with topological systems from rest of the talk. Okay. So he, he defined what he called uni uh, uniformly positive entropy and complete positive entropy. What does uniform positive entropy mean? Does it mean? Well, you take any cover. Again, this is open cover. We're in topological setting, okay? Which is essential. Means what? Well, closure of one of them is not the whole space. 
So that they're both required, right? or well, more than both required. I mean, so it's not like one of them is dead. So if you take any two elements, cover it like that, it's, the, the space has got positive entropy with respect to that cover. So he called this uniform positive entropy. Okay. And then he defined complete positive entropy, just like in the measure theoretic sense, in each, each non trivial factor of T has positive topological entropy. So non trivial here means the space has more than one element. Again, this is in complex space settings. Okay. So it turns out, so, so in the measure theory case, all these things are equivalent. Both of these are equivalent because we dealt with the previous theorem. So what he proved was this. This, this covering definition, UPE implies CPE. UPE implies topological weak mixing, so this is another property. But there are CPE systems which are not UPE. Okay, so they're complete positive entropy systems. So these definitions are very different. And now we're going to look, and look at the, how different are they. So sometimes, okay, so, so keep in mind, we have two definitions from the rest of this talk here, UPE, implies CPE, in general, the reverse is false. Okay, so, 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 so what we're gonna do is talk about, uh, reformulate all these definitions okay, in, in combinatorial way. So, uh, and this is something you probably have seen somewhere else. Okay, so we have a mapping T from X to X, and for this definition, no need for continuity. Okay, just continue, just any, but, uh, okay. So I is an independent, okay, uh, uh, okay, status positive density, we already know the usual definition, okay. Uh, not the Banach density, but the usual density, positive lower density, okay. So we say I is an independent set for UV, and of course T is understood to be in there, uh, if the following happens. So here's the idea, okay. So, uh, Here's U, here's V. Okay. I is a subset of M. Now keep in mind, these are like open, I mean, what we're using will be open set. So what I do is I look at I1, I2, any finite collection from I. Now I look at all the possible So think about these as coordinate, okay? Okay. So it says, look, okay, so, so think about these as vertical coordinate. Now I say if I take any interaction like this, one thing from each is going to be non-empty. Okay. So basically remember the example we had, like okay, with the shift example. You get all the possible, you get with two to the end many things. This is something similar, okay, except you're going through a set with positive density. And why doesn't it require that this is true for every, only for finite? Well, because these sets are open and the intersection might be empty. Okay? One, so, and the, what we need is open is important. We can't take closure. So basically, you can just say oh, for all of the i if you want, okay, but, but that's not technically correct, okay. So basically, this is saying, look, I'll, Set I, okay. You got cover UV. I is an independent set. That means if you look at this thing for each, uh, look at the, the the cover by given by T inverses, and then take any combination. Take this, this, this. However, from each thing, the intersection will be non-empty. That means they're all non-empty. Okay. So this uh, okay. So but I was going to draw a picture, but I guess I drew it right there. Okay, picture here. So here's what what happens here. Okay, the the result. What, what what okay. So we have a dynamical system, and we have a set of ordered we have an ordered pair. Okay. We say that's an uh, it's an IE pair, independence entropy pair. Okay. If for every pair of open sets which contains one and the other. There's an independent set with positive density. Uh, so here's here's what it says, right? Let me just go to the picture here. So you got x1, okay, let me do it here. x1, x2, 
an IE pair. Let's just say IE pair, okay, here. Means what? Okay, you got to take, take into open set. Okay, I can find some set which is large, positive lower density, okay, such that, so I subset of N large, such that when I look at this T sub uh, inverse of I, U, T sub inverse of I, B, all of these possibility, any kind of things I choose actually has non-empty intersection. So it's making it look like kind of like it's got positive density. So if you go back to look at the example, the first example, okay, there you, the, set, the independent set of positive density was all of n. Okay, so you can do it for every n. So the theorem is what they prove, and this was like not, I mean, it's their theorem, but this was culmination of lots of other results, right? So, so a set has, so it's a set has positive entropy. Okay, this is all topological entropy. Okay, if and only if you can find two distinct points with your entropy pair for this system. So basically, you, you can, can, you've taken away all the dynamics of R to turn it into a combinatorial problem. Okay, so if you've got something with positive entropy, that means what? Well, okay, taking the two points, taking the open set, you can find independent set with positive density, something happens. Okay, so you've sort of gotten rid of all the, take all the possible open covers, take the limb soup, the limit, and all of that. Okay, uh, okay. And so, so positive entropy means uh, every, uh, there is an ordered pair. Which is x is not equal to y, which is the entropy pair. And a system has UPE, that means the, all, every pair is an entropy pair. So this is basically saying entropy, every pair point witnesses entropy, that's positive entropy. And so, okay, so a system has CPE, this is another result. If the smallest closed equivalence relation containing the entropy pair is the whole space. So now we're getting more closer to the stuff we were all. In like in descriptive set theory, right? Equivalent relations, okay? So that is, okay. So, C, so UPE means every pair is an entropy pair. CPE means the smallest, the smallest closed equivalence relation containing uh, the entropy pair is the whole space. So let's look at an example here. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so let me look at a quick example here. Uh, So this, this example, this map, you can prove that every pair is an entropy pair, okay? So this is basically like the shift map, okay? Except do some change here, okay? So if you pick, uh, uh, okay, here, you can prove that every pair is an entropy pair. Okay? Every, every pair here is entropy pair, every pair here is entropy pair. But the thing is, these two parts, actually, let me do it, let me do it, I didn't do this well. Okay, let me, this is incorrect, let me do it properly. Let me go back to the example that I had earlier. Okay. So, so, so everything is invariant, right? So everything here, okay. Any two pair here, here is entropy pair. Any two pair entropy is entropy pair. But there's no interaction between here and here except at this particular point. Okay. So it's a, so it's a, it's a, what they call a, it's not an UPE system because not every pair is an entropy pair. But if I, what's, the, what's the equivalence relation of entropy pair? Well, look, if I look at it, this is zero and one and two. So what's my e, e of x t? So this is zero one squared cross one two squared. What's the smallest equivalence relationship containing the, uh, that? Well, I get the whole space, right? And it was just one time, one time. I do the smallest, smallest closed equivalence relation containing it. It's just, you know, I apply, if, if this is not an equivalence relation, but if I take the smallest equivalence relation containing it, I get the whole space. Okay. So let me do a couple other examples just to hear, just as purely topological. So forget the entropy for a second, okay? And so keep this in mind. Uh, so I will, and this will be essential for, I want to put the Cantor space here. So I'm drawing the complementary intervals. Okay. So I'm looking at interval zero one. Okay. So my set E 
will be union of, okay, so it's a cantor set cross cantor set. Sure. Whoops. Right. So it's an equivalent relation on zero one, equivalent relation on one two, but on the whole space, it's not equivalent relation. Right. 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 Uh -huh. Look at e, right. Is it always an equivalent relation on some random No, no, we'll get to, yeah, no, 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 because it might even be empty. Right, right, right. So all I wanted to do was show an example of something which is CPE but not UPE. Yeah, yeah. It's not UPE, yeah. And it's, it's not a general example. Right, it's not a general example. Exactly, yeah, right, right. No, no, but it's not, it has to be something. So let me give you another example of something which is, uh, so, so I'll, I'll take away all the dynamics, so we will all like get away. Okay, so just call set E. Okay, now take the canter space, take C cross C. Okay, union J cross J, where J are all the complementary intervals. Uh, in, intervals contiguous. Okay, uh, so I probably want to say closed interval. Okay, so basically, what am I looking at? This interval. I got everything there. Okay. I got everything there. I got everything there. And so on. Is that a closed set? Yeah. I need to think about it a little bit, but that's a closed set. So basically, I'm saying you look, look at the, the closed interval, closed interval, put the square there, right? Close it's the complementary interval. And then on the canter side, just make it the diagonal, and then you get it up. Is it closed? It turns out to be closed because if you say, hey, look, if I have a bunch of open intervals converging to something, it's got to be a point. Okay? And that's point cross point in itself. Now, okay, so, so let's do just this. We all get descriptive set theory part. Okay, so this is, is this an equivalent relation? Well, not unless, de definitely not. Uh, what, what if I look at the smallest equivalent relation containing it and take the closed interval? Oh, yeah, let's see. Let, let me first check. Okay, it, it is okay. Wait, wait, hang on one second. It is an equivalence. Is it an equivalence relation? In the way I've drawn it here. No, I, I think it is. It is an equivalence relation. No, no, no. Okay, but, but, but okay, but it's not the whole space. But it is an equivalence relation. Okay, and it's closed. So if I take the closer, if I take the equivalent relation, take the closer, closer, I can't get the whole space cross itself. So this example says, look, if, so what I'll do is this. I mean, okay, at some point what I'll do is inside here, I'll put something like this in here, okay? That's my mapping. And then the entropy pair will turn out to be exactly this. And this will be a mapping which is not, uh, uh, which is not CPE. Okay. Now let me do another quick example over here because I think every, you know, this is like for this audience. So let me take a okay. Is this clear? Did it close that? Uh, it being closed in, in, uh, uh, close under it's an it's an equivalence relation. Okay. But now let, let me take a slightly different approach. Same kind of thing. Okay. So instead of this counter space, I want to take a, a let's say. Uh, Countable closed set. Okay. Compact set. So I'll look at K cross K. And it's complemented is okay, a bunch of open intervals. So I do exactly the same thing. Now keep in mind it's a countable set, so not every point is a limit point. So it's going to have a picture like I had before somewhere. Okay. Okay. So okay. So okay. Let, let, let me let me be more precise. Okay. Let me be more precise just to get the example out. Right. 
okay? So let me actually just make a simple, a specific example. How a sequence converging, that's my compact set. Okay. And my, so, uh, so this is K. Okay. K is the convergent sequence. So what do I do? I could create K cross K, look at the complementary interval, take the closure, and then that cross itself. Okay. So it looks something like this. And so on, converging to a point there. So now this one is not transitive. It's a compact set, but it's not transitive because this is related to that. Okay. Um, this this point is related to that, and this point is related to that, but this is not related to that in the picture. Okay. So so, but can I? What can I do? Well, I can take its equal equivalent relation containing it. Okay, then I get all. Then I get everything except one one, except things contained inside here connecting to one. But when I take the closure, I get the whole space. So I've got like the like the Cantor Benedictson ring here. So if I take any countable compact set and I do this picture, okay, construct a set like this. Okay, so it's so forget all the dynamics for a second. It what, what I get is that it's. Uh, uh, I look at this. Uh, I look at the smallest equivalent relation containing it. Okay. Eventually, I wind up with the whole is zero one cross zero one square, and somehow it's related to the rank of the Cantor Benedictson rank of the the object that I'm looking at. It might have to fudge it a little bit because. Uh, okay. Is that sort of clear now? Okay. So we got rid of all the dynamics, right? So here's the thing. When we want to construct examples, we want to construct complicated dynamical systems. Uh, so, to get CPE of larger and larger classes, okay. So the so the uh, the entropy pairs satisfy some satisfy something like this, and then we just get rid of don't even forget the dy dynamics and just say, look, you know, from we got some kind of rank kind of stuff, and then that's going to be we get a large rank attached to it. Okay, so that's sort of the idea behind this, some of this stuff. Okay, so this is what I did uh, more precisely. Let X be a compact uh, metric space, E the subset of X squared. Then E plus is the smallest equivalent relations that contain E. Okay, and then gamma of E, then you take its closure. So for successor ordinal, you do the, you know, the obvious thing. The limit ordinal, you take the union and you take the closure. Okay, this is exactly what we're doing in specific examples. Okay. Okay. I, I already did the example on the other page here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what the, uh, uh, this is my co author. This is the earlier paper they wrote before I got into things here. So, uh, uh, Felipe. So, if you have a dynamical system, it has CPE if and only if there exists a countable ordinal alpha. Such that you look at this entropy pair and apply the gamma operator, and you eventually wind up with the whole thing. And then this is what they call the CPE rank of a dynamical system. Okay, so there are two parts to it. You got the, the entropy pair, you got to get that, and then you look at the hey, what is the rank? That rank is defined on any, any, in any subset of the cross, cross product. I mean, you can make it symmetric if it's not symmetric to begin with. Okay. So the re recent results on this kind of stuff was this, okay? So if you, so just a quick going through this. Okay. So what they've shown is uh, that if you take a, uh, uh, okay, so you take a, uh, uh, okay, uh, you take a subshift of, uh, okay, you take a, a subshift of finite type. This is one dimensional, map Z here, okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, but with the CPE property, then this turns out to be light, light, light phase plurality. So there's like effective results in there, okay? And then this result that I've talked about, the guy, so what they proved is that uh, if you are on the Cantor space, then the CPE rank, uh, okay, it's, uh, okay, what they proved is if you're in the Cantor space, you can get CPE system with arbitrarily high rank. So Westrick, and she, this is another logician, so she proved that CPE rank is uh, light phase pi one one rank. Okay. 
And then as a corollary to all this, you get that the CPE system is Pi 1 1 and not Borel. And so what's the thing here? Okay, so, so, so this is a nice paper by uh, Westrix. This is more like a tiling and um, you know a lot of this kind of stuff, but 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 it's more, more light phase stuff. So she proved that if you have two dimensional shifts of finite type with, C, uh, with the complete positive entropy property, then it's light phase pi one one complete. Okay, and recently another guy showed that if you take a substitute with CPE property, okay, so this now you're talking about uh, not the light phase, but you know uh, all the possible things, then uh, then you can get uh, things that are arbitrarily high rank is not for else. Okay, so what, what, what is it that we did? Okay, so let me do, uh, I've got what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so let me talk about, okay, so this stuff you, you probably already know. So as you already see, when you took the gamma ray, okay, it looks like a, it's not a derivative, it's exa exactly the opposite. You take a set, you take its smallest equivalence, you take an equivalence relation containing it, take the closure, keep doing it, right? Okay, so uh, so this looks like a, a, the analog of Borel derivative. So, quick review of the Borel derivatives. What do we have? A compact mapping from compact set to compact set. If it's a derivative, means d of a is a subset of a, right? You know, you got a set. You apply the derivative, you get something smaller, right? If a subset of b is this, right? Borel derivative means mapping is Borel, right? And uh, in the limit ordinal, you define the intersections. So, so the, 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 the derivatives include, I mean, give you a some sort of a, you know, operator, right? The, 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 for each lambda, you get this particular thing. Okay. So what's the basic theorem from descriptive set theory? That says if you have a Borel derivative, look at everything which whose derivative at some point winds up being empty. That's a pi one one set. And define the rank by where is the first time you get empty set. Uh, okay, the, the, okay the, the set is pi one one, and this rank is, is a pi one one rank. Only. And this is your standard uh, realm derivatives from Tekrasis, right? So we wanted to do something for expansion. So in, in his book, he said like, well, expansion, you just take the complement, the complement, right? That's, a, that's an expansion. But this is something different. Okay, because you take the complement and you take the closure. Okay, so uh, so what we did was okay. So we defined it in exactly the same way. So an expansion is what uh, a is a subset of e of a. If a subset of b, then expansion contains that the obvious thing. And then at the limit or at the successor ordinal, you just apply the operator, right? And then at the limit ordinal, you take the union and take the closure. Okay. And look at the least place where you stabilize. Okay. And that's called e to the infinity of a. This is a stable part of a. Okay. So what we proved was the following. So suppose you have a compact metric space and a Borel expansion. Okay. And look at set of all c. Such that at some alpha you get the whole the whole uh, the whole space the expansion. Okay, this is pi one one, and the rank you associate with it the first time we get the whole space it's a pi one one rank. Okay, so the proof okay uh, the proof follows very closely to the proof of Kerkhoff's system. Okay, but it's not the same because I mean because first I'm like well okay it's the same thing but then because you take the union and take the closure so you got to do some work. I mean okay so it's not it's, okay so. So okay, so, I, so the nice thing about this, I had to go and learn the proof in detail from the thing, right? So I'm like, okay, and then I realized how clever that the, the original system was, and this is basically follows that. So it's not, but so it's nice to actually really learn that the original proof. Okay, okay so okay, so so we got this gamma uh, uh, operator, right? So what we proved is okay, so. Let X be a compact metric space, and then this, you know, the set of all continuous functions from X into X with the uniform topology. So you, you, take, a, you take a function and map it to the, the entropy set, entropy pairs. That's the Borel map. So you, you, you would hope that would be true. Okay, that's true. It's not, it's not low. It's not continuous. Okay. And, then, uh, and then this, this other thing. 
that we have, you take a subset of a compact metric space, the cross product, and just apply the gamma operator, that's a Borel map. Okay, that's the, you, you take a stat, you take a small thing containing, you take the closure, okay, that's a Borel set. So putting this two together, and the previous theorem about the expansion, you get that, uh, okay. I see the set of all, okay. okay. So if you look at the set of all mapping, dynamical system, we satisfy CPE, then it's pi 1, 1. Moreover, the map, which gives you, you take a operator, look at its uh, entropy pair, and then look at its gamma ray. Okay, that is a pi 1, 1 ray, because we proved everything in between was Borel. Okay, so again, this is not sort of the main result of this paper, right? This was sort of the something there. Okay, so, okay, so here's what we're interested in. So if you have X is a, in, on counter space, the set of all, uh, so okay, here is uh, UPE, here's CPE. Okay. For counter space, uh, CPE is pi one complete, and UP is, UP is always plural, okay, you can prove that. Complexity is kind of interesting to maybe figure out what the complexity is. Okay, so so we're okay. So here's something interesting that happens. That if you have a if you have something called the shadowing property, this is something people are really are interested in dynamics, okay, hyperbolic dynamics. I'm, I want to define it. But then the set of all CPEs actually system is Borel. So if you add something slightly to it, it becomes Borel, okay. In fact, if you look at set of all topological mixing property okay, on graphs, like interval circles and so on, suppose you have a, look at set of all the mappings on the graph, or fix a graph, and which has, which is mixing, which is, which is complicated, and CPE, then actually that collection is Borel. It's not so complicated. Okay, so this was something kind of important here, that on graphs, mix, if you have mixing, then the CPE, Collection of all CP system is Borel. So what we actually proved, okay, here are the non-Borel results. If you take uh, interval zero one or n cube, whatever d cube, then the set of CP system is pi one one complete. And okay, and and that's not so uh, complicated. That was actually I can give you the argument in a second. But the hard part was this. This was the main result of the paper. That if you look at the set of collection of all mixing uh, topological dynamical systems on the counter space with CPEs two pi one one. So what we could prove was not pi one one complete. For some reason, for a long time I thought, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it in the reduction. But in the end, it wasn't a Borel reduction. So all I could get was from there it was the rank was arbitrary high. And then I was talking to Solevsky about this, and he's like, yeah, that happens because there's some other results. People prove something with analytic non morale and ten years later somebody proved it was actually. Sigma one complete or something like that, right? So this might be one of those things. Okay, so let me just say, uh, so this proof I actually uh, basically gave, and let me just say a couple of things about that. So this is, okay, so it, it, it's based on the Hurovich's uh, theorem, which says what? The set of all, uh, countable close set, countable sets is pi one one with your classical hermits there, okay? So this is basically, okay, so I'll just finish it up here in a minute. So the, so, 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 forget, so the main theorem is really complicated, but let me just give you the, the simple thing about the interval zero one, just mixing things, okay? So what do I do? Let K be countable. Okay, so I'm gonna assign the map, uh, let's say TK, from zero one to zero one. Okay, so what's T sub K? So this is exactly the map that I discussed earlier. Yeah, bring my one down here. Oops. Okay, so I put my K here, whatever K is. I look at the complement of K. Okay, and then on those complement of K, I put this in map. Okay, and so on. And on K, I make it the identity. So T sub K, okay, equals to this on J, 
an identity on K. Okay. So now, if now, okay, you have to do a little bit of work to say, like, look, what are, what is the entropy? I need to look at the entropy, i.e., pair of this map, right? Okay, you can prove that the IE map of this pair is just going to be the exact set that we talked about earlier, the cross product there, and then just the, the diagonal. Okay? And so if K is countable, it's applying, it's, it's, count, it's like, kind of like applying the Canon Bernard Dixon ring, right? You, keep, you just get rid of the, if, if you got intervals like this, next step, this is gone. And okay? when, when they're connected to each other, immediately, right? And then each time when you've got an isolated point, it just disappears. Between the two, it disappears, right? And then eventually you wind up with the, uh, with the whole space. Because you're picking up, these are the intervals larger and larger. Okay. On the other hand, as Ricardo, and I said something nonsense pointed out, if I have the cater space, okay, then when I, and when I do the same kind of thing here, well, the adhesic actually is an closed equivalence relation. And so the, I can't go any further, and it's not the cross product. Okay. So the set K is uncountable. Okay, then I have to just, then I just, somewhere I wind up with a, something like the canter space and I can't go further. Okay, so this is the case to prove for the interval, but now the, the, the hard part of the, the other general theorem, the other theorem is that we do this with the canter space, but now you have to make the, the, the maps mixing. So these are, none of these are like anywhere like mixing. Okay, they're all actually disjoint and separated out. And that was like the huge bulk of the work. And that's, uh, let's see, this is basically, all written out here and we'll stop here. Thank you. Okay, Rafael Caroya Alzado La Mano. Hey, Rafael. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I can hear you. Hey. Hey. Uh, uh, no, I was I was just wondering about these uh, these n maps. Uh, uh huh. Uh, did you uh, just like because I I, I stumbled upon uh, upon these the same kind of maps uh, for a different problem, and I was wondering, did you come up with uh, with these, or uh, is there a sort of general theory, or is it um, how? Oh no, so 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 this is fairly standard. Basically, okay. So the end map, right? I mean, yeah. from the dynamics, right? So like the way I had it here. Uh, okay, so you can think about this as a, okay, in some sense, this, in some sense, like shift on three symbol. Okay. So you would, I mean, okay, so you, so, so your topological dynamics, you worry about continuous, you know, but it's something like this. Okay. So in fact, it, yeah, so this end maps, this stuff is like really standard. I mean, yeah. So I, I could have easily used map like this, but then I had to worry about connecting up properly. So it's, there's nothing special about the end map. What I really, all I really need is that uh, these, in this particular proof that I did, I just need something which is uh, 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 UPE. Every pair is an entropy pair. Okay. And there are lots and lots of examples. It's just I chose this one because it's very simple and I can connect it up very easily without making it too unnecessarily complicated. All right, and uh, so so I, I I was wondering, did you did you ever try to sort of um, uh, make a a scheme of these maps and and look at the look at the uniform limit of them, and it would sort of like give you a fractal map from from zero one to zero one. Does it does it ring a bell or or absolutely not? What uh, I mean. Okay, so that's sort of a, okay, uh, okay, okay, not in this context, but people have done that, but not in this context, because here what we're interested in, not so much the, you know, you're trying to get UPE system, right? So the, the goal was kind of something different here. Okay. Uh, and because the, the, the goal was not, yeah, so, so it was not the complex, okay, so the goal, because you still want the, uh, I mean, you, you want to start with something fairly, with, you know, something which is UPE, right? I mean, every pair is an order to entropy pair. And then you want to build larger and larger and larger complex, uh, complicated system using it. Mm -hmm. So that, so, so that, so this was not the, what we looked at in, in this particular context. Yeah. All because right. it doesn't do, because it doesn't help anything, right? It doesn't build anything. So 
because 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 the map itself is not so so, so important as the as the the, the set of entropy pairs, right? The, what the map does is, is kind of, in some sense, kind of irrelevant as long as you get the right selection of entropy pairs out. All right, thank you. Sure. Okay, thanks again, Darcy. Thank you. Oh.